Hey, it's another great day in Denver. We are living in Denver, Colorado, and today we're gonna go over a map tour, jump in my computer and show you a little bit about Brighton, Colorado. Brighton's a suburb northeast of Denver, and uh, we're gonna get to it here in just a second. <laughs> Okay, I'm Michelle Wise, my partner Cheryl Crown is not here today because I do the map tours. We are living in Denver, Colorado. If you're considering making a move to Denver metro area, or you are live here and are considering making a move within the Denver metro area, you've come to the right spot. Because we live here, we can give you the inside scoop on everything there is to know about the Denver metro area. And today we're gonna cover Brighton, Colorado. So make sure you subscribe below, tap the bell for notifications, so you can be the first to know when we drop a new video. And listen, while we live here and while we are realtors in the great state of Colorado, our main purpose with these videos is just to give you all the information you need so that if you're considering moving here or within Denver, you have uh, expansive knowledge of what it would be like to actually live here. We get calls and emails every day from people just like you. So make sure you tap the bell, subscribe below, or shoot us a text call or email so that we can help you. We do answer all the calls ourselves and uh, we are ready to help. So let's get to it. Okay. So we're we are so glad you're here today. Uh, again, we're going to cover Brighton, Colorado, which is a great suburb, Northeast Denver metro area. And some people may not consider it a suburb because it is a little further out east and north than what some people here think of metro suburbs. But with the, all the expansion that's going on in Denver and the uh, growth, uh, there's nowhere to go but out from Denver. So Brighton has really benefited from this growth um, and really uh, seen a lot of development occur over the last several years. So um, let's jump into my computer and I'm going to kind of give you a bit of what we're going to talk about today. We are looking at a map of Denver. So this is your greater front range area right here and uh, that goes up and down fort collins is up here at the top of the map and down towards the bottom is castle rock larkspur you keep going further south and you'll be in colorado springs so right here in the middle you can see is denver and brighton sits up to here to the north and the east of denver so let's scroll in a little bit you can kind of get before i do that let me show you like these are the mountains so if you're an outdoorsy person want to ski hike fish boat all that good stuff you're not too far uh again you're on the eastern side of the metro area so depending where you want to go in the mountains it's going to be you know probably over an hour drive to kind of get to that um mountain feeling a little closer if you wanted to hit the, the foothills but that gives you that idea so let me zoom in just a little bit here and also uh today bear with me because i'm using uh, a new format for that i think you're all gonna love to kind of show you this uh part of the map so um I'm a learn. It's a little bit of a learning curve, but I think we can manage it. So again, here you have Denver right here, smack in the middle. Um, this is DIA right over here, this white mass. So you can see Brighton is highlighted here in the red with all these little yellow dots they are great things I'm going to show you about in Brighton. Uh, but the location's nice to get to the airport. So if you are uh, looking for a job, commuting, something of that nature, a uh, lot of people that live in Brighton or travel for work, either work at or they work at the airport, travel for work or work at the airport, uh, great proximity to DIA. You're probably 20 minutes to get over to, to DIA to get catch that flight or to get to work. Uh, if you're going to work downtown, um, you're going to have a little bit more of a commute. You have to come down I-76 or uh, over to I-25 and shoot down to Denver. So not the most convenient if you are working out of the house in downtown Denver. One thing that several people do work, one place that several people do work that live in Brighton is Boulder. So Boulder's over here. Boulder has a lot of corporate uh, entities here along in Superior, along the highway right here. And that allows you to kind of zip over on 470, which is a toll road, keep that in mind, uh, but get you over here in, in lots of corporate office buildings over in this area because Brighton doesn't have a big corporate office presence. So most of the employment in Brighton is going to be your local uh, city town type of positions, uh, industry as far as uh, farming, ranching, things of that nature, and also just, you know, the local retail mom and pop type places. They do have a uh, 
some bigger restaurants, chain restaurants like Texas Roadhouse, Applebee's, Chili's. They have a Walmart. So you do have, you know, big box, a few big box stores if, if that's the type of work you're in. But um, as far as corporate office goes, not a lot up there. So you're going to probably have to commute to that. Um, the nice thing, though, about Brighton is I-76. Let's see if I can zoom in just a smidge more here to show you. I-76 is the main interstate that runs through the town of Brighton. So um, again, I-76 is this highway right here that goes all the way up into the northeast corner of Colorado. You also have not a far jaunt over to get to I-25, which again, we've talked about before in other videos is your our main north south uh, interstate that runs straight through the middle of the state or straight from one one northern boundary to the southern southern boundary of Colorado. And then you're also going to have 470 here, which is this loop that kind of goes around the city. Part of it is toll, part of it is not, but this whole area up here by Brighton is toll. And so that's going to cost you some money to drive on that. Again, our tolls here in Colorado are not cheap. I've been in other states and it's less than a dollar to go several miles here. It's a couple dollars to go several miles. So keep that in mind because that does add on to your cost of living if you're if you have to take those types of roads. So again, you can see here that this, again, this is all Denver Metro down in here. A lot of, uh, you can see by the map, a lot of growth and development. But as you work up your way east over here, up here, you can see the topography of the map changes quite a bit. It's a lot more rural. So farmlands and acreage and ranches. So, you know, it does have a little bit of a rural small town feel in Brighton. And I'll show you when we go to the little downtown historic district, you'll see that, but um, you're gonna have that option. You know, another thing a lot of people do here is they work in Greeley or Fort Collins because that's really not that far up north here. It's, it looks pretty far on the map, really it's just right up here a little further above Milliken, but um, you know, it's you're not typically having as much traffic heading north uh, because it is more rural than if you're heading south into Denver. So. Let me show you here. So the great things about Brighton, uh, your cost of living is gonna, your money's gonna go a little further in Brighton, put it that way. So if you're looking at housing, uh, you know, the house that you can get in Brighton for 500,000 is gonna be probably a little newer or a little larger than what you would get if you went further south into the Denver Metro area. So that's something to keep in mind. And I'll show you that here soon, but um, let me go here and pull this up here. Yep, okay, so here we are. This is Brighton. So you can see there's a nice um, bit of, you can see right here, this is the older portion, the more central portion of Brighton, kind of uh, where a lot of their commerce is, uh, restaurants, shopping, things of that nature. If you head over here and you can kind of see from the map too, how tight and dark gray this is uh, with the, the lots and the blocks that you can see in here. Let me zoom in just a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so you can see that it's very dense populated over there, older homes, smaller lots. If you move over here along I-76, which is this highway right here, you'll see it looks much more like master plan community. So most of the growth that has occurred in Brighton has gone to the east. And I think a large piece of that is because of its proximity here to I-76. Uh, again, that's a major interstate that takes you from Denver up to the corner of Colorado. Um, and so, but you can tell that in a mixed, intermixed amongst all these new neighborhoods over here, there's a lot of, uh, green and farmland and crops and so forth. So you can see that, see how that kind of grays out there and you've got the, the circles from the farms and so forth. So um, East is gonna give you those newer homes. West Brighton is gonna give you uh, the more central old town feel. And then you can even go a little further West. I'm gonna show you a house over there and that will give you uh, a bit of uh, a little more acreage so forth. So. Let's start with this one here. So this one here is our uh, is our five hundred thousand dollar price point house. So if I zoom in on it here, we can get a feel for what the neighborhood is like. The this particular one that just recently sold sold for exactly five hundred thousand um, dollars. But you're going to get this new community. So you can see it's a master plan. They've got park space in there. Uh, there's some water retention. 
uh, cul-de-sac streets, you know, nice spread out area here. And so obviously when this map was taken, you can see that it is a lot. They haven't, they hadn't even started building there, but that was the proximity of it. But I'm going to zoom over here and kind of show you just so you can get a feel for what the neighborhood is like. Um, and there's a couple similar house floor plans in this one that you can see. So let's zoom in here a little bit. So you see how you can see here that this, this house right here, that's spinning around and this house right here is the same floor plan or similar to what sold for 500,000. So you can kind of see what you get. Houses are closer together, um, but not, these actually for a new build communities look pretty well spaced out and uh, just very suburban feel of a neighborhood here. So if we zoom in a little bit more, you can see, um, Let's rotate back around this way here so you can see that ranch plan. So you can see right here is that ranch plan right here. So obviously they don't have the, the grass in yet, um, except for in the front yard. Most builders in Colorado will give you your front yard landscaping and then you are responsible for the fence, backyard landscaping. Just that you can see there, these houses actually are very well spaced for being a new build community. Uh, lot, side yards are, are hard to come by a lot of times in new, new, new build communities they place the houses so close together but in this neighborhood you're going to be spending about six hundred thousand dollars on a house and you're going to get usually a three bedroom two bath home uh this house does not have or this neighborhood does not have a pool it does have an hoa small hoa but, but basically just kind of covers your uh community areas so that is that let's zip over here to um or since we're on this side of the town, let's zip over here and check out uh, some of the, maybe, like I said, bear with me, I'm learning this new system. Here we go, we're just jumping straight into the lake. So this is Bar Lake State Park and you're not very far from that house I just showed you, it zoomed in way too close, but this is a great well-known lake here in um, Northeastern Denver. Uh, it's got, campgrounds, you can boat, you can fish, trails that you can walk and bike. Uh, not really any hiking trails as far as elevation climbs go because it is very flat out here. This is plains country and so, uh, but lots of trails that you can walk the dogs on, uh, run on, you know, anything like that. There's also some archery ranges out here. Uh, you just, you get a nice outdoor feel uh, once you're on the state park grounds. You just, you don't even realize that you're so close to a city. We've, I've actually been there. It's a fun place to camp. Uh, water is actually relatively warm, um, fairly clear. So it's, it's a great place. See, but here, what I was trying to show you is the proximity to this 500,000. I mean, you're just literally a hop, skip and a jump away from that. So it, it's nice if that's something you like to do to have that proximity, throw the boat on the water and head out for the day. Bar Lake State Park. Now let's jump over here to this house, Kingston Street. It is our house that runs about, the neighborhood that runs about $750,000 you're going to get a little more acreage, a little more space. These houses are spread out. It's in the neighborhood called Todd Creek. And these houses have been around uh, for about 20 years, give or take, depending on where you're at in the neighborhood. Um, but you have some acreage, uh, usually, you know, one and a half to two acres, some maybe a smidge smaller or a smidge bigger, but, um, you can see the difference here of the neighborhood that you've got just space around your house. You know, again, that 1.5 acres really gets you a nice space, uh, nice size lot with some space from your neighbors. And this house also has an uh, outbuilding. So that is nice. It's a 35 by 35 foot outbuilding. This particular house was built in 2000. Um, it's going to give you five beds and three baths. It's a ranch, which again, in Colorado's a little bit harder to come by. Um, so let's zoom in a little bit on it so you can get a good feel for what that looks like. But see how you have, you know, they'll, they'll have these yards on this neighbor's house here, front and back um, of grass and turf, but then you've got all this space, nice space behind you. So this one here, you can see the outbuilding. A lot of these properties have outbuildings. You can see here from, from the different uh, looks at all of them over here on top, uh, but it really just gives you some nice space, a little more rural feel um, than being in a uh, mass developed neighborhood. So uh, again, here's another outbuilding, you know, 
not sure exactly. I can't remember what I've read about um, if this is the neighborhood that allows horses or not, but uh, you'll definitely most likely be able to have some kind of chickens or goats or something, I would think. So, but that's something we can definitely check into if this is a neighborhood that interests you. But yeah, it just gives you that nice feeling of being able to be centrally located, but far enough out that you feel like you're kind of in your own little space and a uh, little bit more remote living. Lots of open space, but nicely maintained roads, nicely maintained um, homes. It's a, Todd Creek's a very nice neighborhood, highly desirable. Okay, let's head over here and we are gonna go check out what a million dollars get to in Brighton. This million dollar property here is on the west side of Brighton. Zoom out, but yeah, look at all that space. Can you see how those houses are just spaced so nicely apart? And then again, you're still not far from a whole lot of things. You're, you've got that nice close in feel, but, uh, a bit of extra space to give you that feeling. Okay, where are we here? Okay, so here on that last neighborhood I told you, this right here again is the downtown Brighton area. So you're not far at all from that. So you're, you're close in, but you still feel like you have space. This house over here, the mill, which what you can kind of expect to get for a million dollars in Brighton. Uh, this is a really great example. It too is on a little bit of acreage. I can get my thing to work again new program here trying to make it figure it out as i go but uh let's see let's zoom in here so this particular house has 5,000 total square feet it does have a full walkout basement it is not finished though so your finished square feet is really only about 3,500 square feet five beds three baths this one has a swimming pool and um this is about a million dollars so you can see here this look at this space so you've got all this farmland and agricultural space over here but again these homes are nicely spread out in a community to give you that community feel gives you that feel of space and uh, the all the greatness of the amenities of being close in so here we are so again five beds about five thousand total square feet if you finish the basement and you would obviously could add another bedroom uh, or make it an entertainment area kind of whatever you think uh would best suit your needs but again a big size lot and uh this this particular house this the lot next to it there is designated open space that will never be built on and you'll find that in some of these neighborhoods that offer um some of these open space feelings with being able to keep that open space ever basically because it's it's deemed open space and is not allowed to be built on so Again, that's a great looking house there for a million dollars. Your money goes much further up north in Brighton than it would uh, if this house were sitting in the middle of Denver. It would be multi-million dollar home. So yeah, that's that. Let's back out here again and let's go into downtown Brighton. Um, one of the things that when I talk to people who live in Brighton that they love about you know, and ask them, well, what do you love about living in Brighton? They say the small town feel with the proximity to being close to Denver for the airport, downtown Denver shows, friends and family that don't happen to live right in Denver. So, uh, or that happen to live in Denver, not right in Brighton. So that, that really kind of helps them. So, and again, you're not far. Here's where you are with the million dollar house, 750 house, and here's downtown, uh, Brighton. So when again when i'm talking to people about what they like about brighton you'll see here that they have a, a rec center they this is was recently fairly recently redone by the city of brighton and um it's got the full rec center um it has ball fields lots of open space um for you know courts and things of that nature let's see if i can zoom in just a bit further so you can actually get a better feel for what this looks like I'm pretty sure they have a pool inside as well. Um, full workout facility, workout classes, you name it, they've got it. But you can see they, the city does a really nice job of kind of building for the town feel. Like this is a, a modern building. However, it uh, kind of ties in with, with what's around it to make it feel like you know, it fits into the community. That, let me go back out here. And this rec center is pretty central to the main town as well. Um, the old town, historic town is right off of Highway 85, which actually takes you up into Greeley and can get you over to Fort Collins if that's where you wanna go. Um, it's got a lot of charm to it here in this old downtown. Let me zoom, oops, wrong way. 
Let me zoom way in here. A lot of mom and pop restaurants. Again, they do have a few of the chilies and uh, chain restaurants and so forth, but um, a lot of just really great mom and pop eateries, Mexican food. This place, this town has some of the best Mexican food you've ever eaten. Uh, in fact, uh, La Estrelita is where we are going to uh, pop into and show you a little bit about that on our vlog tour. So make sure if you're interested in that, you check that out. But uh, let's zoom in here so you can kind of get a good feel. So see, this definitely has the, the charm and the feel of that old cowboy town feel that it used to be, you know, 100 years ago or whatnot. Um, but Brighton's going to have everything you need. It's got car dealerships and uh, car repair places and libraries and uh, workout facilities and dance studios and shopping. Uh, so got everything here. You don't really need to leave Brighton if you don't want to, but you definitely can. And um, one other thing I was going to show you, they have, let's see how quaint that little downtown area is. It's a really fun, fun little place. They also have a place called the Armory and that's a performing arts complex. And that used to be uh, exactly what it is, an armory back in the day. And of course, as times change, they've taken that out and revamped it, but they'll have, it's a historic building in uh, Brighton and they'll have events and you can rent it out. So this here is the Armory. Again, they, they do concerts, all different types of activities. And when the city does a lot of their events, a lot of their events are gonna start here in downtown. They do the bike rides throughout the town once a month every summer. And you can kind of go in and see different routes and where it's taking you anywhere between, I think like four miles and nine or 10 miles, family friendly, fun events, moonlight bike riding. And then they also do holiday events, your typical, you know, uh, winter holidays, winter fairs. Uh, they do things at Easter, spring festivals. So this was the old armory and it's obviously now been converted into some things uh, off this performing arts complex. And it's just a fun staple in the community. So, um, with that, it also wanted to let you know that Brighton is the county seat of Adams County. And so if you ever have jury duty or need to go to the courts for something, it's nice and close. It's right there in the county. So that's that. So that kind of wraps up our map tour here. Let me take you here to um, give you just a quick review of the statistics of Brighton uh, on niche.com here. Okay, schools. One thing I want to talk about with schools is Brighton has their own school district. And you look at this and you're thinking a C plus, that doesn't sound so great, but you got to keep in mind that it is spread out. And when you're looking at school districts, it's hard to weigh something that covers as much ground as the Brighton School District does and compare apples to apples when you're in a smaller town versus a rural setting versus a big city setting. And so I think with some of these school grades, that's what happens. So what you really want to do if you have kids and, and schools are important to you, you want to look at the individual school. So you find the house, you see what schools it feeds into or vice versa. You find the school you want your kid to be in and then you see what houses are around it because I guarantee you or I probably guarantee you that, you know, most of the schools in Brighton overall have a higher than a C plus average and it weighs different things. What's important for my kid is different than what's important for your kid. So it's important to look beyond that big school picture of that overall grade and really dive deep into each school. Um, but so anyways, let's keep going. So Brighton has a population of right around 40,000 people. Uh, it's grown a lot. And um, the average price for real estate, the median home value is about 366,000 and rentals are about 1400. So again, it's it varies. If you're in that middle portion of Brighton, you're going to be much dense, more densely populated. If you're out in this in the outskirts of it where the houses are newer, uh, you're not quite as dense. So but most people own their homes in Brighton, which is a nice, uh, nice thing. And then again, there is just your general kind of feel. Uh, one thing to note too, when you're in Brighton, if you, you can actually find a house for a, uh, less money than what that shows. If you go into the actual older section of, of Brighton, the more original section of Brighton, you're going to find house prices all over the board because there are homes that are a hundred years old. Some are not fixed up at all. So you're going to be able to get those for a lot less. Some have been scraped and rebuilt. Some have been added onto, some are fully rehabbed and refinished. So, uh, 
you could probably find a house anywhere from $250,000 up to a million dollars in the actual old section of Brighton. So didn't go over that today, but uh, because it is so diverse and it doesn't give you a good feel for what kind of is there, but I did want to touch on that because I do think that's important for you to know. So that's it for me today. Uh, don't forget, if you like what you see, check out our Brighton blog and our Brighton pros and cons. Or if you're looking at other areas in the Denver metro area, make sure you check out our videos. Make sure you like the button down below or tap the bell for notifications and please subscribe. Uh, we don't uh, bug you, but we do drop videos usually about three times a week. So that way you'll know when something new hits. So take care and have a great day. We'll see you next time.